Well, g'day everybody and welcome to ACW Thursday Night Anarchy. I am your lead commentator, the wild one, Bruce Northaway. And tonight, we are in for one hell of a show. With the teasers of 2K24 on the horizons, we're going to make sure that 2K23 will end in a bang and not a fizzle, unlike another 2000s game we will not talk about. But either way, let's get tonight's show started with this match. Hit the button too soon. Ah, well. The following contest is your opening match of the evening. It is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first. Representing the NWW slash GCA from the Multi-Reality Protection, Protection Agency. One half of Ruthless Aggression. This is Tracy Agress. Yeah, that's right. One half of possibly one of the most dominating tag teams in the GCA slash NWW. I'm just going to keep calling it GCA because Saint slash NWW. NWW can get a bit tiring sometimes, but either way, this is going to be one hell of an opening the mic, opening match, I meant. I just hope Tracy knows what she's doing, accepting the challenge of her opponent tonight, because the stories that Bush Ranger told me about her, I don't think I want, I don't think I ever want to be on her in her path. We never heard the expression "best to be on the devil's side." In, in his path. Yeah, I think that kind of slogan counts for her opponent tonight. And now, introducing her opponent. She is from Parts Unknown. This is Saber. Yes, Saber. She only talks when necessary. I mean, she's not like only where she can't talk. She just chooses not to. And only talks when she has to. I mean, possibly one of the few people that she'll talk to is Bush Ranger here. Is that correct? Yeah, that's pretty much correct. I'm possibly one of the few people in the world she trusts enough to talk in front of him without her being prompted to. Okay, fair enough, but, well, this is going to be one hell of a match, I can feel it coming. I haven't really much you can say about this woman. Nothing much is known about her, honestly. Alright, Tracy is ready. Sabre is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. I still can't get over the size of Sabre and whoop! Tilt a well, DDT! And Sabre straight up onto her feet. Kick to the midsection. And attempted fisherman's but punch right to the ribs. And double A spine buster! And Sabre picks Tracy up. Uppercut. And, well, hip toss, takedown. And again, Sabre going straight back up. And Sabre right on the attack. And DDT. And a kick right to the top of the head. And I'm still surprised that those shades that Sabre is wearing never comes off. I mean, Ranger, what the hell are those shades made of anyway? I'd tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Classified, huh? Correct. Okay, that's all you had to say. Okay, jumps out of the ring. And right to the ribs. Oh, wait, to the chest, I mean. Almost looked like a heart. Almost looked like a Stan Hansen heart punch, didn't it? DDT right onto the mat. Blocked the elbow strike and uppercut. Really using those claws on her gloves to her advantage in this one. Back elbow strike. And again with a tilt to well DDT. And getting straight back up into her feet again. 
I mean, I know the Zen, I know the Zen mindset of block out your pain, but that is ridiculous. And a snap suplex. Man, our own momentum took her with her as well. Slapped away, kick to the midsection. And club to the back. Picks her up. And a claw slam. And gone right for that. What the hell do you call that? Because I'm going to have a sleeper hold. And the ref there to see if if Tracy's going to submit. But Tracy fights out with a couple of punches right to the side of Sabre's face. Sabre shaking the cobwebs. And, whoa, whoa, whoa. That is like a fucking fly hitting a brick wall just then. German suplex. And Sabre dragging Tracy away from the ropes. And stalking Tracy aggress. That decides she's going to pick her up instead. And, well, whatever she was planning, Tracy put a stop to that one. And neck breaker. And what's Tracy? And elbow right. A needs right to save his elbow. Probably good strategy. Kick to the top of the head. And club right between the shoulder blades. Another club between the shoulder blades. And ends again. I think Tracy was trying to knock the shades off of Sabre's face. And again, Sabre looked like she was going for a urinagi, but Tracy fights it off. And a... Alley-oop. Flatjack? Alabama Jack? I don't know. And on the shoulders, and gut buster. And what the fuck after, after a move like that, she's still trying to get to her feet. Elbow drop. And Tracy must be looking at Sabre right now, trying to work out, what do I have to do against this woman? Kick to the midsection. And, and again, her own momentum is following her on that suplex. And Sabre rolls out of the ring to catch a breather. And slowly getting up onto her feet. And Tracy with a suicide plancher. Or the helo. Head over heels if you wanted to know. And Tracy going for a side Russian leg sweep. Right onto the barricade. Tracy stalking. Sabre picks her up onto her feet. And goes straight back into the ring. And what the heck, Sabre, there's no time to taunt. Yeah, give it up. Don't try to tell her not to taunt. She does what she wants. Okay, then. Double A Spine Buster. And Sabre picks Tracy up. And Irish whip right to the barricade. Try to go for a clothesline, but missed and hit the barricade. Stomp to the midsection on that one. Sabre picks Tracy up. And Irish whip straight back into the ring. Sabre quickly following. And Sabre dragging Tracy away from the ropes. And a stomp right between the shoulder blades and going for that headlock. Is she going to make Tracy tap snap on nap on this one? No, Tracy fights out of a couple of well-aimed knee strikes to between Sabre's shoulder blades. Kick to the back of the knee, but... Sabre just stepped aside. I have no idea what the hell that move was, but it doesn't matter. Neck breaker. And now again, Sabre is stalking Tracy Aggress. And, no, nope, Tracy fights out of it. I think Tracy knows what Sabre was planning and is trying her best to make sure it doesn't happen. Springboard DDT. Going for a pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. Sabre could have reached for the ropes, but she chose to kick out instead. And stomp right into the mat. Stomp on the arm. Tracy picks Sabre up. And... Well, all that combo right to a reverse DDT. Picks her up. And a twisting neck breaker. I think Tracy was thinking about a top rope move, but Sabre rolled out of the ring. And spear right off the apron. 
Tracy quickly follows and picks Saber up. Irish whips straight back into the ring. And Tracy looking to go to the top rope. And she spins around the 054 and nails it. Goes for the pinfall. One, two, kick out. And barely at that. And now Tracy measuring up Sabre. And Sabre jumps back. Club to the back. Springboard drop kick, but she missed. Gutler. And a European uppercut. And I think Tracy's trying to show her martial arts style, but well, considering what Bush Ranger told me, Sabre is a master of several martial arts styles. She just mixes them all together. Clothesline. Clothesline. Kick. Caught that one and roundhouse kick to the other knee. And now again, Sabre measuring up Tracy Aggress. And this time she's holding on for it for that bear hug. And, oh God, Tracy just passed out. Ranger, where did you find this woman? Again, I tell you, but I'd have to kill you. Why can't you just say classified? Because saying that's more fun. Touche. But either way, that was a hell of a fight. So let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Sabre! Man, God help whoever's going to be in this woman's path. Because if that showed anything, who I think the women's division might be in trouble. And now we're getting ready for the next match. Which is going to be a blind card. Because like I said, Bush Ranger apparently loves to have blind cards. Yeah, he's not kidding. I like to keep my audience guessing. Well either way, let's get ready for this next match. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Italy, he is the made man, Tony Maroney. And Tony Maroney showing, well, no one's showing him respect, but then you have to respect the mafia, man. Otherwise, you wear, otherwise, you wear a concrete overcoat, capisce, and I'm probably going to get slapped in the face for doing that really poor attempt at an Italian accent. But who cares? It's funny. And besides, my face has been slapped so many times in Japan. I mean, fucking hell, their slaps are so hard, I'm surprised my face isn't on the other side of my head. And now introducing his opponent. Representing XPWL, this is the inverted shadow. Wait, I forgot to say he's from the realm of shadows. Whoops, silly me. But ah uh, well. Well, I wonder how Shad would be thinking what he would be thinking, knowing that he's actually going up against a normal opponent and not a super-powered bean from the Black Hand or something like that. And I just finished my drink. I'm going to go grab another one. Don't look at me like that, Ranger. It's not alcohol. You banned it from the commentary position, remember? It's just Pepsi Max. Shad here, if you've forgotten, is the former XPWL Super Heavyweight Champion. Now I know what you're thinking, how can someone's his size and build be the Super Heavyweight Champion? And my response to that one is, I have fucking no clue. Ask the promoter of XPWL that one, Crystal. 
All right, Tony Maroney is ready. Shad is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. Let's do this. And meeting right in the middle of the ring, and power slam to start the match off. Stomp on the elbow. Elbow drop. And Tony with another elbow drop. And Tony Maroney looks like he's setting up for a power bomb and nails it. And kicks straight off. And face first right into the mat. Stomp missed. And an elbow strike. Stomp to the back. And a kick to the and a kick to the lower back itself and face first right to the mat. And Tony with a big boot knocking Shad almost out of his boots. I say big boot, but it looks like Tony Maroney's just wearing simple shoes. Simple dress shoes. Net breaker. I mean if you're gonna dress up in that kind of attire, you can't wear boots, can you? You have to wear dress shoes. And elbow strike from from the top rope to the outside. Tony straight back up. Collision. And attempting a big boot again, but Shad stepped aside, picks him up. And snap suplex. Club to the back. And going for a reverse DDT. And going around and Shad. Side slam on the made man, Tony Maroney. Every time I say his full name, I can almost hear a Canadian. You know who I'm talking about. Basically making fun of his name. Irish whip straight to the ring steps. Picks him up. And Irish whip and the ref counted seven. And the ref called eight. And looks like Shad's not going to... Well, count of nine, and Shad broke the count. I think Shad wants to win this in the match. He doesn't want to count out victory. Kick to the midsection. You would against a guy like Tony Maroney, you should take every shortcut you can get. And possibly the reason why... Well, I can't say that now, because a couple of punches to the head made him drop. Net! Backbreaker, clothesline to the back of the head. Picks him up. And Irish whip. Trips over. And what the hell? Stomp to the chest. And another stomp to the chest. Kidney strike. Kidney strike. Kick to the face. Oh, come on. Not this move. Do you really have time to do this move considering the ref just counted six? And there's the seven count and a double knee to the lower back. Get in the ring, you two. Come on. Finish this match properly in the ring. I can't believe the crowd just trying to break his fingers. And I think Shad and Tony basically just had a silent agreement to get back in the ring. And side rushing leg sweep. And holds onto it for an octopus stretch. AKA a modified Rings of Saturn. And Tony easily gets out of it, punch to the forehead, punch to the forehead, and another punch to the forehead. Forcing Shad to let go. Clothesline. I think he was trying to take Shad's head off his shoulders with that one. Picks him up, punch to the side of the head, and the Baba Bomb. Picks him up, and it looks like he's attempting the Mafia Cutter, but Shad says forget about it. And does a power slam instead. One. Two. Kick out on two. And Shad can't believe that Tony Maroney kicked out of that. Picks him up. Kick to the midsection. I guess we're about to sit. No! Back body drop. I guess Tony saw that coming. And Tony the size is going to drag Shad away from the ropes. And hello Duck. He just missed the first match. This is the second match. One. Kick out on one. And Tony Maroney with a suicide dive. Even though I still think we need to come up with a different name for that because YouTube has been a bit toey about moves, about name, words like that. Oh, YouTube and your overlords, may you guys the fuck up already. Picks him up. 
I know I'm never going to get monetized, so I don't give a fuck. And a side slam. He picks him up. Slap blocked. Punch to the side of the jaw. And Irish whips straight back into the ring. And as the ref counted four. And Shad is going to the top rope. As Tony gets up. Well, Shad changed his mind. But blocked to the big boot from Tony Moroni. Stomp on the elbow. And shoulder separator. Kick to the lower back. And Shad going to the top rope. Right up there and elbow drop from the top rope. And now measuring Tony Moroni again one more time. Is he going to go for that deep? No! Jawbreaker! Again Tony saw it coming. Mafia cutter! And the lights just went out and what the fuck? Oh come on, I thought those reality anchors we got from the SCP Foundation were supposed to block that shit. Yeah, they block you from reality warping, not shadow magic. Well, okay then. Power slam. And going for the pinfall. One, two, three, that's it. Bloody hell, that was a good back and forth match. Shouldn't be ashamed of that match, it was a good bloody match. And I think that was the move that ended the match as he dropped down for the pinfall with the one, the two, and the three. So let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Shadow. And I guess Shad is showing respect to the ACW crowd and to his opponent tonight. Possibly with a breath of fresh air considering his opponent tonight wasn't a super powered being that was just a normal man. So there's no way he needed to use his shadow magic for that match. And now coming up to the next match, which I should announce right now, that this is a fatal four-way Extreme Rules elimination match, where the winner will go on to ACW Combat Zone to challenge the Night Maid for the ACW Emerald Championship. I won't reveal who's in this match. Because again, most of these matches are blind cards. Means, as Bush Ranger said earlier, he likes to keep his audience guessing. The following contest is a Fatal 4-Way Extreme Rules Elimination Match. Where the winner will go on to Combat Zone to challenge for the ACW Emerald Championship. Introducing first. Rising from the ashes of Arizona, this is the Keeper of the Sapphire Flame, Phoenix Blue Blaze! In Phoenix Blue Blaze, she considers herself, in her words, the one true superhero. I still have no idea what the hell she means by that, but hopefully Ruth McKay's not backstage somewhere, because we all know how much she hates superheroes. No idea why. In fact, I wonder what Ruth McKay thinks about that Lunar Knight that's been, you know, protecting the night in Ponyville lately. You think you knew it. And now introducing the second competitor in this match. Hey, wait, what the hell is this? Are you serious? I have to read this? This following match is sponsored by Melissa's Hot Dog Cart. It comes in three variations of spice. Medium, hot, and run for your life, I need to get the milk. She is from Ponyville, the leader of the Punk Rage Sisters, representing NWW slash GCA slash So Real Wrestling. Are you fucking kidding me with this? I'm not reading all these nicknames. She is the rocker, Melissa Ewing. God, her ego is starting to get as big as bloody our true stupidity, honestly. I mean, how many titles has she won in different promotions? And now introducing the third competitor in this match.
from Kyoto, Japan. This is the new man, Kibuki Cutie Sawako. And, well, since you're here, Duck, who eventually won the Foxes ONW? ONT. Who won that whole thing? That round robin tournament. Who who won that? Because I got so plastered, I forgot. And Kitty Zawako re-enters the ring. Re-enters the ring, getting ready for this match. I mean, these no extreme. These extreme rules matches means no counter, no disqualifications. These are basically matches that me and her father basically excelled in. But we both hoped that Cutie would not compete in matches like this. But, well, I think, again, what can you do? We're just going to have to deal with it. And now we're introducing the final competitor in this match. From parts unknown, but we all know she's from the deep pits of hell. This is the head of the ACW medical team, the demonic healer, Nurse Banshee. Yeah, possibly the creepiest woman that you'll ever meet in the ACW. She doesn't wear that mask, you know, to protect her face from germs or even hide her face. She wears that mask because it's magically charmed to block out the banshee scream she does when she gets frustrated. And trust me, she wants... Oh, so it's not fully finished yet. They need to do a tiebreaker, huh? Okay, then. All right, Phoenix is ready. Melissa is ready. Cutie is ready. And Nurse Banshee is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. Let's do this. And Roundhouse kick to the midsection. Knee strike and super kick. Kick to the kick into the corner and flings her out. Elbow drop. And, whoa, Cutie was thinking about something, but Melissa cut her off. Close line from behind. Guillotine, right on the top rope. And neck breaker. A wild stomp missed that one. And Phoenix with a fisherman suplex. And Melissa going straight for Phoenix Blue Blaze with a DDT. I mean, it's almost, a, it's almost feeling like that Melissa cannot decide who she wants to go after. And armbar, um, but Phoenix. Nurse Banshee fights it. This is the reason why you need more than one commentator for matches like this. Springboard back elbow. And going for an armbar on the outside. And, oh, there's a pin on the inside, but the ref was checking the submission. And the ref just finally saw the pinfall. And not even a one count. Float over, DDT attempt, but no, Phoenix fights out of it. Irish whip to the ropes. And ducked down, but did a German suplex. Wait, was Phoenix just talking to Melissa's little Jimmy? Or is it little Jen? Ah, uh, joking. I just don't want that to be bloody conjured in the big, so please ignore I said that. And going for an armbar. And is Cutie gonna tap snap? No. Phoenix fights out of it, and Irish whips straight to the barricade, stomp on the shoulder. It looks like Melissa's gone for the first toy in this match. She goes for a kendo stick. But Nurse Banshee cut her right off. Kip up, into Gertie. And going for a abdominable stretch. And again, Cutie going for a pinfall. Hip toss. One, two, three. Phoenix Blue Blaze has been eliminated. Man, she must have gone knocked rotten. Face first right to the mat. And going for a pinfall, but nope, the ref didn't even get to count once. And Cutie walking around the ring, DDT. I think she just walked over to Phoenix and apologised for knocking her silly. I guess 
Mate, I guess uh, Senshi did put a bit of honor in the cutie in her matches. And cracked Ron on his forehead with a kindo stick. Cutie snatches it and cracks Melissa with it in the midsection. And then right straight back on the back, on the lower, and chop block from Nurse Banshee. Yeah, Nurse Banshee can heal you, but she also knows where to hurt you. Irish whip right into the barricade. Flying forearm. And I think Melissa was just about to play air guitar, but Cutie cut her off before she even had a chance to. And side slam, or side suplex if you will. Attempted elbow, but Nurse Banshee blocked and spe stepped back. Super kick. I think she deliberately aims the point of a heel to the chin of Cutie Zawako with that one. And Nurse Banshee picks Cutie up. And Irish whips straight back in the ring while Melissa grabs a hockey stick. And again, this is not Canada, so you, there's no ice out there. Flatliner, one, two. So no ice, that means we don't have to keep our stick on the ice. <laughs> I know you keep threatening to fight me in the parking lot, Mark. I keep telling you, bring it. One, two, kick out on two. And Melissa picks up the kendo stick. And I think Kitty has noticed it and just taunted. No, she was taunting Nurse Banshee. And cracked Cutie in the face of it. Nurse Banshee snatches it and cracks Melissa in the stomach with it. And breaks the kendo stick on Melissa's chest. Swanton bomb. And again, Nurse Banshee goes straight after Cutie Zawako. And grabs the hockey stick and gets back into the ring. What the? What the fuck just? What just happened? Did that hockey stick just disappear? Somebody please clip that! What the fuck just happened? Somebody please clip that! One! Kick out on one! Where the fuck did that damn hockey stick go? Crack in the, crack in the head! Missed that one! Seriously, somebody please clip that! Code breaker, gone for the pinfall! One! Two, kick out on two. And single leg DDT. And just pointing down at Melissa. And Cutie picks Melissa up. Irish whip straight back into the ring. And again Irish whip straight back into the ring. And Nurse Banshee, what's she looking for? And she grabs a ladder. Sling blade. Flies the ladder back into the ring, picks her up. Irish whip over the top rope. Kick and elbow strike, elbow to the right to the knee. Irish whip to the bed, to the turnbuckle. Close line. And Melissa dropped down, almost landing on that ladder. And back body drop. And Cutie looking for a toy. And she grabs a table. And cracks Melissa with the table, and now Nurse Banshee grabs a stop sign. Seriously, where the fuck did that hockey stick go? I'm still hung up on that. One, two, kick out on two. And Cutie motioning that she's going to end this, end at least Nurse Banshee. Nope, double knee strike. And this Banshee's staying, with, we're not done yet. Nope, revert. Irish whip straight to the barricade. Picks her up, kick to the chest, punch to the midsection, and cracked in the face of that table. Kick to the midsection, punch, and snatches the table. But forced to drop it as Cutie Irish whips her right to the barricade. Chair picked up, and, well, Cutie just told Melissa to stop that. And Irish whip collided right out there, and, what the hell was Cutie thinking just then? Kick to the midsection. And a front face slam. And a ooh, over the shoulder, belly, over the shoulder, catch yourself, forget it. Backbreaker. 
and drop down for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And Nurse Banshee cannot believe that Cutie Zawako kicked out of that. Like, I can't believe that damn hockey stick disappeared! Sorry, I should stop getting hung up on that. Punch to the midsection. Another punch to the midsection. And... Neckbreaker! Nurse Banshee goes straight after Melissa, but Melissa blocked the clothesline with a front face slam, or the stroke. But she land, looked like she aimed right for that stop sign. And Melissa picks her up, and DDT only just missing the stop sign. And Harakarana, and just missing everything on that one. And Melissa with a DDT on Nurse Banshee. Drops down for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And Melissa can't believe that Nurse Banshee kicked out of that. Flying for her. And going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. Man, this match is going to come down to who's the most hungry for a championship. Because remember, the winner of this match goes on the combat zone to challenge Nightmade for the ACW in Emerald Championship. And, oh, Arakarana almost hitting the ring steps. Gone for the pinfall. Running around. One, two, kick out on two. And Melissa spins around and... What was that, the Falcon Arrow? She drops down for the pinfall. Ref out of position. But wait, why the hell did Nurse Banshee just do that? I think she may have realised she doesn't want Melissa to get a, to get at least one victory. And a punch to the face. Jump back. Punch to the face, kick to the chest, slap to the chest, kick to the midsection. And again, kick to the midsection. And Melissa with a... Well, reversed and chop lock. And a drop kick to the side of the head. And Harakarana. And Nurse Banshee dropped the tape, dropped the chair. And Kitty Zawako taking a few steps back. I guess she's just waiting for one of them to come to her. And she taunts from the other side of the ring. And thank you for that, Dad. Dad, can you do me a favour and post that in the XPWL server? Double axe handle. Irish whip straight back into the ring. Drop down for the pinfall. On. One, two, kick out on two. And Melissa, well, waiting for one of them to get back in the ring and cops a super kick to the jaw in for a trouble. One, two, kick out on two. And Nurse Banshee re-enters the ring with a steel chair. And sets it right up into the corner. Attempted clothesline, but, well, Judy blocked it. Irish whip to the ropes. And a hip toss takedown. Almost into a suplex. Club to the back, kick to the midsection. Code breaker. And Cutie, Cutie rolling out of the ring. Ooh. Oh, Melissa almost landing on the top of her head. Club to the back. And... Nurse Banshee measuring her up. And... Surgical precision. And Melissa rolling out of the ring to catch a breather. Probably the smartest thing she's done in this match. And again, the surgical precision on Cutie Zawako. Drops down for the pinfall. One. Two. Kick out on two. And Nurse Banshee is wondering how the hell did Cutie Zawako kick out of that? And now Nurse Banshee measuring up Cutie one more time. And Cutie reverses it with a couple of kicks to the thigh. And a Harakarana. Clothesline. Drops down for the pinfall. One, two, three. Melissa Ewing has been eliminated.
All right, we're now down to the final two. So place your bets, chat. Who's going to win this match? Is it going to be the Nurse Banshee or is it going to be the new Mad Kabuki, Judy Zawako? And a drop kick to the chest, forcing Judy Zawako down. And Nurse Banshee grabs the chair that she put in the corner. I guess she changed her mind and decided to put it back. And Nurse Banshee stalking Cutie Zawako. Flatliner! And now measuring Cutie up. I guess we're about to see the surgical precision one more time. No, Cutie! Oh no, she didn't block it. Surgical precision! Drops down for the pinfall. One, two, three, that's it. Well, I guess Nurse Banshee not. I guess Nurse Banshee has a date at the ACW Emerald Championship. Oh, God damn it, Derpy Science, really? One, the two, and that's what eliminated Melissa. The Sling Blade. And the Super Kick. The Code Breaker. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner. And now, number one contender for the ACW Emerald Championship, Nurse Banshee! Well, Nurse Banshee definitely earns that victory. You can't deny that one. And whoa, look at that crazy look in her eyes. And now we're going to get ready for the next match. And if you indulge me, I'm going to take the next match off from commentary because I put a lot of energy into that one. I'll do the I'll do the introductions, but I won't commentate during this match because I need a bit of a break. So, yeah. Thanks for understanding. Unless Mark, Jim, Shad, JC, or whoever wants to jump into the commentary booth and call this match for me, this match is not going to have commentary. I need a bit of a break. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing, introducing first for the Dark Omen as she's draped over the arena. Representing the XPWL, this is the Demon of Dark Omen, Rackadile. Yeah, Rack. Two years ago, he made a vow that by the end of that year, he would hold at the same time all three championships from the ACW that was known as CAW back then, YWL and XPWL, and he succeeded. Even merged all three titles into one, calling it the Triple Crown Championship. I took a, I tried to take a crack at it, but I failed. But eventually the championships were split back in the three and returned to their respective promotions. And I don't think the Demon of Dark Omen knows who the opponent's going to be tonight. I mean, I do. I'm holding the sheet of paper right here. But Bush Ranger, well, even he, even sometimes he has the wrestlers going to matches blind.
And I guess we're now about to find out who the Demon of Dark Omen is going to be taking on. Well, if you know that music, you know who it is. I mean, we don't even know who it is. And he's been working here, well, since ACW started. And now introducing his opponent. From the SCP Foundation site, Redacted. Reason for being here, Redacted. Real name, Redacted. Favorite topping of donuts, Redacted. Favorite menu item from McDonald's, Redacted. Whether he wants me to punch him in the nose for not giving us information, Redacted. This is D71092. Yeah, I'm starting to get a bit annoyed that we don't have any info on this guy. And the SCP Foundation keeps a tight lid on it. I mean, I've never seen an introduction with so many fucking black bars on us. I swear to God. One of these days, we're going to get some information on this guy. The Demon of Dark Omen is ready. D71092 is ready. Right, ref, ring the bell. Enjoy the match. I'll be back as soon as the match is over. Thank you for understanding.
Here is your winner, the Demon of Dark Omen, Rackadile. Well, that was a hell of a back and forth brutal fight. And it's obvious the Demon is never going to be dragged into the SCP Foundation. Now it's time to get ready for the next match. Which I'll make the announcement now. The winner of this match is going to go on to ACW Combat Zone to challenge for the ACW Women's Tag Team Championship. And we already saw Nurse Banshee get the victory earlier, getting the number one contendership for the Emerald Championship. There's still two open, open matches left for the International Women's Championship and the Tag Team Championship. Well, one of those is about to be filled right now, as a matter of fact. The following contest is a triple team elimination match, Extreme Rules, where if you, your opponent, if your partner gets pinned or submitted, aka eliminated, you can stay and try to win the match for your team. The last team remaining will be the victor and will go on to ACW Combat Zone to challenge for the ACW Tag Team Championships. Introducing first. And introducing team number one. Representing the Unforgiven. They are the Nightmare Azura Draven. The Queen of the Spiders Tarantula. They are the Army of Fear. Well, the Army of Fear, who are also working with the Black Hand of the XPWL. I mean, Hell's Bells. Kalan's been acting like a manager for the members of the Army of Fear slash the Unforgiven. She even holds the ACW International Women's Championship. And I'm pretty sure Bush Ranger is basically tearing his scales out, trying to figure out a way to get the title off her. But the Nightmare is Eric Draven and the Queen of Tarantulas and the Queen of Spiders Tarantula. They have been the tag team champions. But it has been a little while since they held those titles. Introducing the second team in this match. They are from the other side of darkness and Mexico, respectively. They are Neko Dark, the Lucha Bunny Luna Loca, the Dark Zodiac! Well, it has been a while since seen these two in ACW wrestle together because of injuries and that. But now, they are back together hoping to become number one contenders for the tag team titles. I mean, I'm pretty sure these two held the NWOW tag team titles for a good long while. Neko enters the ring. I mean, you can tell these two are good mates. And they'd have to be good mates considering the way they work well together.
And now introducing the final team in this match. They are from West Hollywood, California and Austin, Texas and Earth Realm respectively. They are Commandy Ca Commander Cassie Cage, General Sonya Blade, Cassie Cage and Sonya Blade. I kind of defeated the purpose with that one, didn't I? But it doesn't matter. The mother and daughter duo are coming down to the ring. And they are both hoping to capture, well, to go for the Tag Team Championships, which are currently held by the subjects. And this is not the first time these two have teamed up together in ACW. I think this will be the second time. Because these two have had their own, you know, goals. But now their goals have interlocked and they're going for the Tag Team titles. All right, ref, ring the bell, get out of the way, and let's do this. And Luna Loca looked like she was a, looks like she wanted to do a springboard, but changed her mind at the last split second. And on the middle rope, well, caught nothing but air in that one. And Tarantula blocked, standing moonsault, lands on her feet, and octopus stretch from Neko Dark onto Sonya Blade. And Neko Dark, I mean Luna Loca, just jumped out of the ring and jumped straight back in. Looks like she was wanted to go for a weapon, but again changed her mind. Harakarana, Harakarana. Irish whip to the turnbuckle. Lufez press. <laughs> this match is going to be hard to call on my own. So Mark, Jim, JC, Shad, or whoever, if you're listening, jump into the commentary booth. And is there a Draven with a... Well, it doesn't matter because Neko Dark fought it right out of it. Elbow drop from Cassie. Elbow from Cassie to Luna, Luna Loca. Brain Buster. And a pinfall attempt on the outside. Nope, kicked out. Elbow. Caught. And a punch to the chest. Elbow strike. I mean, I'm pretty much thinking that a lot of people would be fearing Sonya Blade and Cassie Cage considering... Those two have fought gods. And even came out victorious against gods. So, what kind of strength do mere mortals have against gods? One. Kick out on one. And clothesline. Over the top rope, onto the floor goes Azura Draven. And Luna Loca, Irish whip straight back into the ring as Cassie Cage from behind with a neck breaker. And going for those mounted punches. Drop down and Cassie with a drop kick between the shoulder blades. And front slam, springboard elbow. And Dream Valley Driver. You know, I reckon we really need to come up with a different name for that considering the arsehole who used to be known for it. Hip toss takedown. And suplex. Looks like she had to gut wrench that one. Kick to the midsection. Elbow blocked. And Luna Loco a swing sling blade. Punch to the side of the head from Sonya Blade. And I guess Sonya Blade just realized the daughter's in trouble and ran into the ring. Headlock punch to the side of the head. And drop down elbow strike. And Sonya Blade going to the top rope as Cassie Cage. Measuring up Luna Loca and super kick. And Luna Loca rolling out of the ring to catch a breather. But remember, these are falls anywhere. As the ref is jumping out of the ring, kind of spilled that. The Charlotte's Web. Irish Whip. And side rushing leg sweep. And Tarantula slamming Cassie Cage's head into the mat on the outside. Hora Karana. And a kick to the midsection. And it looks like 
the paired off is, well, it doesn't matter now. Because in these types of matches, you don't know what to... Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. That's going to be a... Oh, Sonya Bladeshead barely missing that. One, two. Kick out on two and just barely at that. Irish whip straight back into the ring and Sonya Blade followed Neko Dark. And Sonya with a re... Dr. T. And stalking Neko Dark on the shoulders. And elbow strike, elbow strike. And another elbow strike, forcing Sonya Blade to let go. On the shoulders, get oh, wait, wait, one, two, kick out on two. And Neko Dark picks up Sonya Blade, kick to the midsection. And Irish whip to the ropes. And Lufez press. Gone for those mounted punches. Right in front of a tag team partner who just got back up into her feet. Release, German suplex. And is Tarantula going to make... Nope. Cassie Cage fights right out of it. And Luna Loca picks up Sonya Blade. Knee to the elbow. Drop back, kick the back of the thigh. Elbow strike. And Neko Dark Iris whips Cassie Cage straight back into the ring. There has not been a single elimination in this match yet. But place your bets. Who do you think is going to win this match? Oh, pinfall attempt. Hey, ref, come on. And a flip swan time. And going for the pinfall on Tarantula. One. Two, kick out on two. And Cassie picking up Azura and... Well, I don't even know what that cutter was, but one, two, one, two. Both with a kick out. And I guess both Cassie and Neko Dark are a bit shocked that they didn't get the victory. One, two, kick out on two. Bloody hell, this match is going to come down to which tag team is the most hungry for the tag team title. DDT. And I guess both Sonya and Cassie were thinking the same thing, going after Neko Dark. But Cassie let her mother have the honors. Hip toss takedown. Irish whip. Oh, grand strike into Sonya Blade. Sling Blade. And standing moon. Standing shooting star, but Sonya got her knees up. Drop kick to the side of the head. And I guess that super kick just took all the energy out of Cassie Cage. Well, pinfall attempt. One, two. One. And both Tarantula and Neko Dark kicked out of their, well, their pinfalls that could have got them both eliminated. And... Dr. Teeth right on Tarantula. And Cassie Cage with a forward headlock. Is she gonna make Neko, is she gonna make Luna Loca tap snap or nap? And she's really wrenching it and no! Oh, Luna Loca fights out of it. Package DDT followed by that reverse Samoan. Oh, I don't know. One, two, kick out on two. It's going to take a lot more than that to put Sonya Blade down. And considering how long she held the International Women's Championship for, that's saying something. And Neko Dark again going for that manoeuvre and nails Cassie Cage with it. And Cassie just gets back up into her feet like she didn't even feel a thing. Drop kick. Springboard. Try to go for a pay like Oh, pinfall attempt. Kick out. Kick to the chest. Samoan drop, Samoa drop. Going for a pinfall and the rep out of position, but Sonya Blade broke up the pinfall. Well, Azura Draven lining up for the shotgun drop kick. And, well, she was in the drop zone but decided not to take it. One, two. Neko Dark kicks out. And Sonya, I mean Cassie, Irish whips Azura Draven over the top rope and onto the floor. And Sonya Blade, Irish Whips, Luna Loco into the barricade. And Neko Dark just shaking the cobwebs out. And looks like she's trying to figure out what she wants to do. 
Finds out. And stops Sonya Blade from grabbing a toy. Irish Whip straight back into the ring. And Moon and Neko Dark grabs a ladder. And Tarantula tried to make her drop it, but Neko Dark dropped it regardless. Elbow strike to the side of the head. Hilo and oh, Lightning would be shooting up the back. Right out the freckle and out of the mouth with Tarantula. And oh, Snake Eyes running to the hardest part of the ring apron. And a pinfall attempt. Kick out. I didn't even hear a one count. The crowd is loud tonight. Irish whip straight back into the ring. I mean, who's going to get the first elimination at this point? All six women are really fighting at this match hard. And a back elbow strike right to the chest of Sonya Blay. Oh, pinfall attempt. One. Kick out on one. Cassie Cage kicked out. Drop kick to the side of the head. And Luna Loca drops a knee on the elbow of Sonya Blay. And quote the Draven. Never more. One. Two, one, two, get both kicked out. And I think Tarantula and Draven are shocked that their respective opponents kicked out of that move. And Luna Loca grabbing Sonya Blade and gut wrench German suplex. And Luna Loca leaps up to the top rope. I guess we're about to see the Bon Ton Bob. And a bunt on Bob and no, Sonya Blade stepped aside. Punch the midsection. And Irish whip to the ropes. And face plant right into the middle of the ring. Oh, pinfall attempt. And the ref jumped out. No, kick out. And again, she's gone for the bonton bomb. And nails it this time. And Luna Loca drops down for the pinfall. One. Two, three. Sonya Blade has been eliminated. And a brain buster. Or quote the Draven nevermore. Sonya Blade has to go back to the showers. But Cassie Cage can still win this for her team. She's just going to have to fight really hard. And whoa, whoa, whoa. European uppercut. One, two, three. The Tarantula has been eliminated. So the intact, so the only intact team right now are the Dark Zodiac. Man, this match is just too close to call. Who's going to win this match? And Draven, Irish whips Cassie Cage back into the ring. And, well, right into the barricade. Irish whip again right into the barricade. And I guess both the Dark Zodiac realise that Cassie Cage needs to be put down so they can have the advantage. Brain Buster. Gone for the pinfall. One, two. Cassie Cage kicks out, but barely kicks out. And Draven Irish whips Luna Loca straight back into the ring. Clubs. Neko Dark from beyond. Irish whip right to the barricade. Samoan driver. Back elbow strike. And it looks like Cassie wanted to set up for the super kick. Lightning bolts will be shitting up the backside of Luna Loca with that one. And Neko Dark stalking Cassie. Picks her up right onto her feet. Kick to the midsection. Super kick! And I think that was the last, may have been the last of Cassie's energy. Goes for the pinfall and the ref way out of position. One. Two. Kick out on two. Elbow strike. Dropping Izura Draven. And Cassie Cage picks up Neko Dark one more time. And face plant right, right under the outside of the barrack, right near the barricade. Slap to the chest, duck down. And round the world, Hurricane. I mean, Cassie Cage, I mean, what can you say about her? She has the confidence and toughness of her mother, but the cocky arrogance of her father. The fight and the fighting skill of both. I mean, that is a hell of a lethal cocktail, isn't it? Sling Blade on Neko Dark. And Draven picks Neko Dark up. Another Sling Blade. As, Nick, as Luna Loca cops it into Gertie to the back of the head. 
And is there a Draven? Looks like she wants to go after Luna Loca as Cassie Kane grabs a chair. Neck breaker. Kick to the back of the knee. And I guess we're about to see... No, just a simple suplex. I thought it was going to be quite the Draven. I guess I was wrong. And she picks her up. And quote the Draven. Never more. And gone for the pinfall. One, two, three. Luna Lopka has been eliminated. Now we're down to one member of each team left. This could be anyone's now. And, well, is there a Draven blocked Neko Dark from trying to make Cassie Cage submit? But she's probably going to regret that if she goes into a headlock. Is she going to make Azura Draven tap, snap or nap? And really wrenching it and Neko Dark's just standing there watching. I think she wants Draven eliminated. Nope, Draven with a couple of stiff shots to the, to the ribs, forcing Cassie Cage to let go. Kick to the midsection. And pump up, Harakarana. And oh, over the, over the head, reverse belly to belly suplex. And knee to the side of the Cassie Cage's head. And Neko Dark just noticed the steel chair and decides to go for it. Cracking Kaki, cracking Cassie in the back with the chair. One, two, kick out. Bloody hell, people, place your bets. Who will be the next one to be eliminated? Will, be, will it be Cassie, will it be Neko, or will it be Azura? Kick to the midsection, core and hip toss takedown. And I guess Neko Dark just noticed Azura Draven and... Oh, she tried to run out of the way, but didn't run out of the way in time. And Cassie Cage stalking Neko Dark. Super kick. And that might have been the last of Cassie's energy on that one again. Kick to the midsection. And Azura Draven, Irish whips Cassie right back into the ring. Oh, I see. Neko Dark wants to be the one to finish off. I mean, Azura Draven wants to be the one to finish off Neko Dark. And Irish whip right to the barricade again. And Neko Dark trying to catch her breath right now. Irish whip right back into the barricade. Face first into the, into the top of the barricade. Back elbow strike. Elbow strike. Elbow strike again. And, ooh, right onto the barricade. Drops down for the pinfall. One. Two. Kick out on two. Bloody hell, how much more energy could Cassie Cage have left in a tank? Sling blade. Drops down for the pinfall. One. Two. Three. Neko Dark has been eliminated. The Dark Zodiac have been eliminated. So now we're down to Cassie Cage and the Nightmare Azura Draven. And Cassie with a drop kick going for the pinfall. One. Two. Kick out on two. And Neko Dark, I think, is a bit confused on where the exit to the on where the exit to the ringside area is. Kick to the midsection. Irish whip straight back straight into the barricade. Field goal kick. And Cassie, I guess, decides she wants to grab a toy. She grabs a stop sign. And forced to drop it. And Irish whips straight back into the ring. And Draven gets back into the ring and sling blade. And Cassie's in the drop zone, but Draven's not going to do it. And no. Slams her head right back, right into the mat. And leg sweep takedown. Draven picks up Cassie Cage. And rolled through. And drop kick to the side of the head. Right into the middle of the ring. That's probably never good. Picks her up. Another roll through. And drop kick to the side of the head. Again, I have no idea how much left in the tank Cassie Cage has. And Draven goes out and picks up the stop sign. Changes her mind and slides back into the ring. Irish whip to the ropes. Hip toss takedown. And she's stalking, and the sides. No, elbow drop. And Cassie going for a leg, 
a leg lock on Azura Draven, hoping to make a tap, snap or nap. And what's she going to do here? And stomp to the thigh or the hip of Azura Draven. But Draven's holding on to her knee. I think she might have hurt her knee on that one. And Cassie Cage with a stop sign dropped and Pele kick. And Draven picks Cassie up. Elbow strike. And a attempted float over DDT, but Cassie Cage fights out of it. Kick to the midsection again. And they quote the Draven Nevermore. Right on the stop sign. Go for the pinfall. One, two, three, that's it. You can't take it away from Cassie Cage. She fought her heart out, but it just wasn't enough. Not with that move. And that was the move that eliminated her mother from the match. With the one, the two, and the three. I mean, the pump up power, and Come on, guys. Leave one replay up so I can call it. So I can call it already. And that's what eliminated Luna Loca from the match. But let's get the official word. Here are your winners. And now, number one contenders to the ACW Women's Tag Team Championships. The Nightmare, Azura Draven. The Queen of the Spiders, Tarantula. The Army of Fear. Bloody hell, that was a brutal fight. And we're gonna be in for another brutal fight. If these notes are correct. Yeah, I said fear, I didn't say beer. And besides, I am a proud me I'm a proud army of beer member. Local six and seven eights. We drink beer. Yes, we do. So we'll do. I'll yell for you. <laughs> Sorry, it just came to me and I had to say it. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. And I guess if you know that music, you know tonight it's fight night. Introducing first to be accompanied to the ring by the Switchblade Arthur Knight and TNT. He is the elite, a member of the Bare Knuckle Brawlers from Dublin, Ireland, Patrick Murphy. And he's coming down to the ring with both members of the Bare Knuckle Brawlers. That's the Switchblade Arthur Knight and TNT. I mean, every time these guys get in the ring, you know it's going to be fight night. And you also know that they're going to produce banger after banger after banger. And insert as many after bangers here as you like. And Patrick Murphy has no idea who he's fighting. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, he had a hell of a match against Barney McFarlane. And I'm pretty sure he got the victory over Barney. And now introducing his opponent. From New Orleans, Louisiana. He is the Shaman. Baron Vass. And I probably don't want to know whose skull that is. But if you're ever backstage in an ACW show and this guy walks up to you and says, would you like to shake a horse in his hand? Turn around and run for your life. Honestly, trust me on that one. All right, Patrick is ready. Baron Vass is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. 
Let's do it, and I apologise, I've got to go use the announcer's room. I've actually been in the go to the announcer's room since halfway into the previous match, so I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and I just saw a kick out from, well, this match. So kick to the midsection, close line attempt, but, well, too high. Club to the back, Irish whip, and face plant right next to the ropes. Stomp on the ankle. And a stomp on the knee. Ooh, that looked like it was painful. Face first right into the knee and Baron Bar stalking. And punch to the side of the head and measuring him up. And no, we're not going to see the hoodoo, you voodoo, bitch. And suplex slam, or a su slam, if you will. And whoa, just pushed him down to his boots. One. Oh, he was going for mounted punches. I thought he was doing something else. And a stomp to the midsection. Patrick picks up Baron Bass and knee strike. I thought he was going for the bro kick. And Patrick Murphy on the top rope. Elbow drop, missed. And what's he going to do? And forward slam. Stomp missed that one and clothesline attempt. Right into the top turnbuckle. Stomp on the elbow. Dropped the knee but missed that one. Running Bulldog. Lifts him up for the choke and Patrick Murphy rakes the eyes. Making Baron Bash drop him. Club to the back. Elbow to the, sh elbow to the lower back. Irish whip to the turnbuckle. And rising knee strike. And reverse DDT. Stomp on the elbow. And going for a, tex a Texas Cloverleaf. Or modified Texas Cloverleaf. And Baron trying to reach for the ropes. Doesn't look like he's anywhere near him. Nate rolls through and kicks Patrick Murphy off him. And a yuck buster. And Patrick taking a few steps back. Maybe he was thinking about the bro kick and tried to go for the bro kick but Patrick I mean Baron Bass ducked it and white noise drops down for the pinfall one two kick out on two and Patrick looks a bit shocked that Baron Bass kicked out of white noise and now he's measuring up he's measuring up the shaman and well, it looked like he was speaking about the Irish curse, but the shaman saw it coming. Elbow strike to between the shoulder blades. And the kill switch. Going for the pinfall. 
One, two, kick out on two. And Patrick rolled out of the ring to catch a breather. And on the top rope. Ooh, looks like he almost looks like he tripped off the top rope, but he made it work for him. And Switchblade running over, but just realised he could get Patrick Murphy disqualified. And the Alabama slam. Ooh, the back of the shaman's head hit the tape, hit the chair right there, as well as the concrete floor. And a double axe handle. Picks him up. And again, after Knight walking over. Realising that he does not want to get Patrick disqualified. He's just out there for moral support. He does not want to get Patrick Murphy disqualified. And Patrick Murphy straight back into the ring. Motioning for the shaman to get his ass back into the ring. Or maybe I should say it in his words. Get his arse back in the ring, fella. So he can get a crack. Slides underneath the bottom rope. And looks like he's trying to play Rick around the rosy with the shaman. And <laughs> the shaman fell for it twice. <laughs> Three times. Power bomb. Going for the pinfall. One, two, three, that's it. Bloody hell, what a victory. And I guess he's definitely earned himself a pint of Guinness for, at the pub later tonight for that one. And the white noise, and I thought that would have been the end of the match right there. The kill switch. And that was the power bomb that ended this match. Gone for the one, two, and three. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Patrick Murphy. Bloody hell, that was a hell of a match. Well, from what I saw, it was a downright brutal. But now it's time to get ready for the next match. Got to block this off. And getting ready for the semi-main event, which is going to be held under standard tag team rules. Something that we don't get a whole lot of in ACW. And I can't even tell you who the who is in this match. Because Bush Ranger won't let me tell you. And don't you forget it, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. The following contest will be a well, scheduled for one fall under standard tag team rules. Introducing first from the mean streets of Nastyville, straight up Nasty Boulevard, right into New Nastywood. These are the Nasty Girls. What the fuck is that? Well, either way, Betty Sags and Jessica Nobbs coming into this match blind. They have no idea who their opponents are. And I think they're both disappointed that this match isn't under Nastyville rules. Basically, no tags necessary and no count outs, no disqualifications. And the crowd definitely not liking the nasties on this night. Um, by the way, if you can't tell them apart, Jessica Nobbs is the one with black hair, Betty Sags is the one with blonde hair. And now introducing their opponents. From the Rainbow Bridge to Valhalla and Scotland respectively, they are Valkyrie, 
and the ICW Women's Champion, Aaron McQuinn. Well, they don't have a tag team name, but they're coming out with Viking Shields. Why the hell are they coming out with Viking Shields? I don't think these two have set up a formal tag team. They're just coming out here just to tag up with each other. And it looks like Valkyrie has a new look tonight. Alright, Jessica Knob starting for her side and Valkyrie starting for hers. Right, ref ring that bell. Let's do this. And kick to the midsection. And nope, caught, kick to the midsection back. And Jessica, Irish whip to the ropes, drop down. And, be well, the momentum almost knocked Betty Sags off the apron. Double A spine buster. And running, body splash. And Irish whip straight back into the turnbuckles. And what is Valkyrie doing here? And body splash right in the corner. And Valkyrie dragging Jessica into the corner. Back over strike and well, Aaron took a cheap shot on Jessica Nobbs. Club to the lower back. Double axe handle. Dropping Jessica Nobbs down. And going for some mounted punches and slams her face right into the mat. And again, slams her face right into the mat. And Valkyrie picks up. Punch to the midsection. And, oh, that was probably a mistake. And Valkyrie has Jessica Knobs on the shoulders. But Jessica fights out of it. Reverse, DDT. Knee strike, kick to the midsection, slap to the chest. Punch to the midsection, overhead slap. And ooh, bloody hell. Punch to the side of the head. And Jessica going right after both Aaron and Valkyrie. Discus elbow to the back of the head. Ref count six. And Jessica slides back into the ring. And Aaron and Valkyrie just walks up. Come on, get back in the ring. And Valkyrie just knocked Aaron McQuinn off the top rope. Discus elbow and Valkyrie dropped down. Nope, rolled underneath the bottom rope. And neck breaker. Bloody hell, that one looked vicious. And Jessica going to try to go for a hot tag and nails it. Betty Sags tags in. And Valkyrie grabs Betty and knee strike to the midsection followed by a double axe handle. And a, oh, a stiff punch to the back of the head. Leg drop. I mean, a reminder, Aaron McQuinn's next opponent for the ACW Women's Championship is going to be the Wind Warrior Kaze at ACW Combat Zone, which should be coming out in about three to four weeks. I haven't fully decided yet. One, two, kick out on two. And a kick to the side of the head. Punch to the ribs. Kick to the midsection. Roundhouse kick. Drops down for the pinfall. One and the... Well, Jessica just hit the referee. That's going to be a whopping fine. Can the nasty girls even afford that fine? Considering how much bail they have to pay. Side slam. Going for the pinfall. One. Why the hell was the ref so hesitant? It wasn't... It wasn't Valkyrie or that who heard it. Who heard him. It was Jessica Nobbs and the Nasty Girls. Back elbow strike. Clothesline over the top rope onto the floor. And Betty gone right after Aaron. Punches her side of the head, but Valkyrie gets back into the ring very quickly. And I guess Betty is going to be taken to a trip to Valhalla. Nails it. Drops down for the pinfall. One. And Jessica Nobbs breaks up the pinfall. And Valkyrie with a body splash, but no water in the pool. Betty Sags slowly getting up to her feet. And springboard, flying forearm strike. And it looks like Aaron wants in the match. And Betty tags out. Jessica in. So is Aaron McQuinn. And yeah, I know that rhymed. It wasn't intentional. Release, German suplex. 
That's all Aaron wanted to do. Tags Valkyrie straight back in. Or maybe Valkyrie wanted back in. Stomp to the ankle, overhead punch. Jessica picks her up, takes a few steps back. And big spear. Gone for the pinfall. One. And a double axe handle breaks the pinfall up. Irish whip over the top rope onto the floor. And a knee to the side of the head. Stomp. And Valkyrie trying to catch a breather as she forces herself back up into her feet. Spear off the apron. And Jessica slides out. Looks like Jessica's going to try to go after Erin McQueen who hits a poison runner on Betty Sags. Kick to the chest, kick to the chest, and a rising kick. And... Side slam! Valkyrie picks up Jessica Nobbs, and Irish whips her straight back into the ring. And Valkyrie back in with Jessica. Jessica, Irish whip, straight to the turnbuckle. And puts her on the top rope. And flings her off the top rope. Why the hell would she do that? She goes right after Erin again. Punch the side of the head. And well beaten the chest ten times, aka the ten beats of the Bowery. Maybe she thinks she's the local drummer of Nastyville. Who knows? Who cares? Nastyville's a place you wouldn't want to. Really? Are you kidding me with that? And a headbutt right on the top of the head of Jessica Nobbs. Valkyrie picks her up, and Irish whip right to the other side of the ringside area. Valkyrie gets back into the ring. And Valkyrie looks like she's going to go after Betty Sags. And brings her into the ring the hard way. And ripcord clothesline. Going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. I think Aaron might have known that Valkyrie was going to kick out of that. And Jessica picks her up, jumps back, punches the side of the head. And going for the abdominable stretch. And Betty Sags breaks it up. Kick to the midsection. And face first right into the mat. Club to the back. Double axe handle attempt. No, Irish whip to the ropes. And attempting a flying forearm strike. But no, Valkyrie saw that coming. Neck breaker. And I guess Valkyrie has had enough and tags in Aaron McQuinn. And Aaron picks up Jessica Sags. Jessica Nobbs, I meant. And a rising knee strike. Gone for the pinfall. One. And again, the Nasties just attack the referee. That's another whopping great find they probably can't afford. Elbow drop from the top rope. And Aaron McQuinn tags out and brings Valkyrie back in. And Valkyrie picks up Jessica. Roundhouse kick. Gone for the pinfall. Why the hell? Again, they attack the ref. That's another whopping fine they're going to have to be, not be able to pay. And a double leg and a double arm takedown. And the ref finally starting to stir one more time. I'm surprised that the ref has not thrown the match out because of the amount of times he's been attacked. Crossbody. Tags in. And she tags in Erin McQuinn. And Aaron got shoved off. And a kick to the midsection. And here comes a, well, a, rising, a rising knee strike. And Jessica going to tag in Betty Sags. And I think Jess, and I think Betty Sags just gave the ref a dirty look. And dragging Aaron to the ropes. Irish whip. Well, didn't catch any of that. Kick to the ribs and back down. Springboard. Kick to the side of the head. And shut up, stomach. You'll be fed after the show. 
Fireman's carry takedown. And Aaron McQuinn tags in Valkyrie. And Irish whip to the ropes. Try to go for a spear, but Valkyrie saw it coming. Nick elbow strike to the side of the head. Stomp on the elbow. And well, oh, cracked the lower back on that one. And Valkyrie climbing to the top rope. Elbow drop right between the shoulder blades. Tags in Aaron McQuinn. And a stomp missed that one. And knee strike. Elbow shot. Elbow, 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 elbow. And discus elbow. Yeah. One. And Aaron McQueen grabbed the bottom rope. And Betty Sags cannot believe that. I think she just insulted Valkyrie. That's probably going to be a mistake. You do not insult one of the Valkyries. And a really stiff punch to the side of the head. Aaron picks up Betty Sags and over the shoulder, knee strike. That's normally a finishing move. She goes for the pinfall. One. And again, a rope break. And this time, it's Betty Sags who grabbed the bottom rope. And tagged in. Valkyrie stalking Betty, stomp to the elbow. And she picks Betty Sags up. Kick to the ribs, punch to the ribs, and a big boot to the side of the head. And Jessica tagged in with a hot tag. Big spear! And goes for the pinfall. And, well, the ref didn't even count one as Aaron McQuinn blocked it off. Irish whip over the top rope onto the floor. And a field goal kick right between the shoulder blades or her wings in this case. Stomps and boot to the side of the head. And a hammerlock. Followed by a... I really need to go through all the wrestles and get rid of this move. Double knee to the lower back. And going for those overhead mounted punches and a stomp to the midsection. Rolled through and, well, Valkyrie returning the favour. And Valkyrie stalking Betty Jessica Nobbs. And I guess she's going to take Jessica Nobbs on a trip to Valhalla! Nails it! And goes for the pinfall. One, two, and the ref kills rope break as Jessica grabs the bottom rope. If she didn't do that, it would have been a victory for Valkyrie and Erin McQuinn. Kick to the midsection. And... Well, trying to go for a shoulder separator, but Valkyrie powered right out of that one. Going for a pump handle suplex. And Valkyrie decides he's going to take a breath and lets Aaron McQuinn back into the ring. And Aaron McQuinn climb into the top rope. And leg drop from the top rope. The guillotine leg drop. And goes for the pinfall. One. Two. And... Betty Sags breaks it up. And Aaron decides she's going to go right after Betty Sags. Headbutt to the back of the head. Makes her fall off the apron. And going for a Kimura lock. But it doesn't matter if Jessica taps out out there. It, it's not going to count. It has to be in the ring. And Jessica rolls through as Aaron loses her grip as she realises. Back elbow strike. Punch the ribs. Punch the ribs again. Ribs, ribs, ribs. I can sure go for some ribs right now. And she picks her up and Irish whip straight back into the ring. And I think Valkyrie was thinking about doing something but decides to change her mind. Double A spine buster. And now Aaron McQuinn measuring up Jessica Nobbs. That Jessica jumped back, feeling what feeling it coming. And rolled through. Rolled through again. Hip toss. Arm drag takedown. Punch to the side of the head. And going for a rev 
GTS, the go to sleep, going for the pinfall. One, and Valkyrie quick, quickly breaks it up. Jessica picks there and back up onto her feet. Elbow strike, elbow strike, elbow strike, elbow strike. And a double arm takedown and palm strikes right to the forehead. And Jessica picks her up, punch to the side of the head. And again, I guess we're going to see the GTS, the go to sleep. Going for the pinfall, and Valkyrie won't even let a one count happen. And Erin McQueen rolling out of the ring, and Jessica punches to the side of the head. Another one to the side of the head. A third one to the side of the head, dropping Valkyrie off the mat. And I guess Betty Sags wants to try to drag Erin back into the ring. Crescent kick. Going for mounted punches and a stomp to the midsection. Picks her up. And a punch to the ribs. Back elbow strike. And a kick to the midsection. Overhead punch to the side of the head. And Aaron basically screaming at Jessica Knobs to get her ass back in the ring. And the side she's going to do the 10 beats the Bowery on Betty Sags. And the rat and the crowd is counting along with her. 9 and 10. And Betty drops down like a sack of bricks and stiff clothesline. And doing a running start and a field goal kick. I mean, if you're ever in Nastyville, do not go to the Nasty Nastyville Arena and watch the Nastyville Nasties in a football match. Because they suck. I mean, how many times can you say nasty in one sentence? Clothesline! But still, it's better than the Rough Riders going up against the Rough Riders because you know these Rough Riders are hungry for these Rough Riders' blood. What the hell? Well, Jessica Nobbs is confident. She's confident that she has this match. Power bomb! And, oh, she just ripped off Aaron. No, that wasn't Aaron's finisher. It came by mistake. And Jessica tags in Betty Sags, and you can see the red marks on the back of elbow strike, elbow strike. And a third elbow strike, forcing, forcing Aaron to let go. Kick, kick, and a kick to the chest. Going for the pinfall. And Valkyrie breaks it up very quickly. Betty picks up Aaron, takes a few steps back, and Spear, again going for the pinfall. One, and Valkyrie again breaks it up very quickly. I never thought I'd see Valkyrie in a tag team match. Well, if she would be in a tag team match, I thought she'd be with one of her Valkyrie sisters or something like that. Club to the shoulder blades. Another club to the shoulder blades. And drops, and Betty drops down, and Erin decides she's going to tag in Valkyrie. And Valkyrie just gave a dirty look to Jessica. Picks her up. And Irish whips the turnbuckle. Flings it down and... Moonsault from the, from the middle rope. Gone for the pinfall. And Jessica breaks it up very quickly. And Valkyrie looked very annoyed at that one. And I guess you see why we don't do a whole lot of standard tag team rules here in ACW. Because these matches can take a while. Knee strike, another rising knee strike, and down goes Valkyrie. Take a breath. Picks her up, elbow to the side of the head. And Betty Sags walks over and tags out. And Valkyrie looks like she wants to take... No, nope, she decides she's going to take Jessica on a trip to Valhalla! Nails it! Drops down for the pinfall. One, and... Barely got a one count before Betty Sags broke up the pinfall. And Jessica trying to get herself back up into her feet using the ropes. I mean, now I see why the NWOW has a time limit on these tag team matches. 
Rise and a knee strike to the side of the head. And Jessica tags in Betty. And Betty sags for a crescent kick on Valkyrie. Goes for the pinfall. One, two, three, that's it. Bloody hell, that was a brutal fight. And it's and standard tag team rules too. And I guess that was it. I guess Valkyrie just didn't, didn't have many more in the tank. I mean, there is a big difference between tag team wrestling and singles competition. And I guess Valkyrie just learnt that the hard way. But let's get the official word. Here are your winners, the Nasty Girls. And bloody hell, that was a brutal fight. But I think the Nasties would be a bit annoyed that they weren't in the number one contenders match earlier. That was won by the Army of Fear. But now it's time to get ready for the main event of the evening. And if you're on any of the social medias, aka Discord accounts that I advertise this shit on, you'd know that this match is going to be a one-on-one -on -one match. Texan representing JC the All-Star and Scarecrow representing the Nightmare, the creature Eric Infernal. Now basically in this match, there is a stipulation. If Texan wins, then JC can pick the match type that him and, the, and Eric Infernal will have for the Intercontinental Championship at ACW Combat Zone. But if Scarecrow wins, then the creature Eric Inferno will pick the match type. So this is basically some high stakes in this in this main event match. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with the caveat. Whoever in this match wins, the people that they're representing will get to choose the match for the Intercontinental match type for the Intercontinental Championship at ACW Combat Zone. Introducing first to be accompanied to the ring by the ACW Intercontinental Champion, JC the All-Star. He is from, well if you don't know where he is from by now, I suggest you go buy a globe. New England. Or get yourself a map. New Mexico. Or go back to college. New York. And get yourself an education, you uneducated twat. New Jersey. He is your certified scout main, Texan. Oh, and I also forgot to mention he is the ACW World Champion. He will be defending that title against Apocalypse at ACW Combat Zone. Almost feeling like it's a YWL sanctioned match going for an ACW title. Figure that one out. Jim, I'm going to drag you into the bloody commentary booth and help me call that match. And now introducing his opponent. Oh, sh shit. What the hell is she doing there? Fine. To be accompanied to the ring by the nether void bitch, Skalan, and the, cr and the creature, Eric Infernal. He is from the realm of darkness. The leader of the Unforgiven Scarecrow! And I have no idea why the hell Creature Eric Infernal is looking on cocky. I guess he has confidence in the Scarecrow that he's going to win this match. Because I heard through the grapevine that the Creature Eric Infernal wants to challenge JC the All-Star to a first blood match. Because of the amount of times that JC has, you know, drawn colour in his matches. Seriously, why the hell is Skalan going out there with him? Eh. 
That happens. Alright, Texan is ready. Scarecrow is ready. Right, ref, ring that bell. Let's do this. And, well, Texan tried to do a running start, but ends up copping a knee to the shoulder. And Irish whip. No, draw back. Clothesline. Goes, drops down for the pinfall. One. Kick out on one. And, well, Texan leg sweeps Scarecrow. And going for a, a modified stretch muffler submission. And let's go. He didn't even give Scarecrow a chance to try to break out. Springboard clothesline. And, and Texan showing why he is the ACW World Champion. And DDT. Yeah, well, you do know Crab's blood is clear, right? And going for punch, punches to the side of the head, letting go. And a stomp. And JC just turned his head on that one. And now Texan going for a knee drop. No, you weren't fighting Eric Infernal. If Texan wins, you get to pick the fight against Eric Infernal at ACW Combat Zone. But if Scarecrow wins, then Eric Infernal picks it. That's why you're at ringside. Scatter gun! And well, Texan doing the right thing here and dragging the Scarecrow away from the ropes. Going for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And Texan can't believe Scarecrow kicked it. And he got straight back up, trying to go for a super kick, but ended up eating a big boot instead. And I'll tell you this for free, shoe leather does not taste very good, even if you put salt and pepper on it. Do not ask me how I know that. It was a bet years ago, all right? And knee stomp on the apron. Rolled out and Hilo over the top rope. Did that right in front of Scalade. And Scarecrow with a ripcord clothesline. I think Scalan is trying to bark orders at the Scarecrow, but I think Scarecrow just mouthed off at her. I may be working with you, but I don't work for you. Picks him, picks him up, and a kick to the back of the knee. Punch to the ribs, block, and overhead punch. Uppercut to the ribs. And a double arm takedown. And going for those mounted punches. And Scarecrow picks Texan up. And Irish whips them straight back into the ring. And JC at ringside looking a bit worried. And elbow strike. Scarecrow picks Texan up. And Scarecrow measuring up for the... Burning hammer. I've just spaced down on what that move was called. Doesn't matter. And Scarecrow trying to drag Texan away from the ropes. And Scarecrow drops down for the pinfall. One, two, kick out on two. And Scarecrow cannot believe that Texan kicked out of that. And a punch to the ribs. Texan with a springboard. Flipped into a DDT. And Texan drops a knee on the elbow. Drops a knee on the elbow of the Scarecrow. Kick. Punch. Elbow strike, kick to the back of the knee, headbutt to the midsection. Irish whip to the ropes, close line. And Scarecrow trying to pull himself up to the ring. Pull himself up, punch to the jaw, another punch to the jaw, a third punch to the jaw. And down goes the Scarecrow. And going for mounted punches, and Texan has just drawn blood on the forehead of Scarecrow. Well, doesn't it turn orange? Well, doesn't bloodstains turn orange after you wash it three or four times? And a DDT from the top rope. One, two, kick out. And Texan must be thinking, what do I do? Have to do to put this dark bastard down? Looked like he was thinking about the scatter gun, but Scarecrow saw it coming with the shining wizard. One. Two, kick out on two. 
and Scarecrow a bit shocked at that one. And now Scarecrow measuring Texan. And looks like he's going to go for the burning hammer. Nails it. Goes for the pinfall. One, two, kick out. How in the hell did Texan kick out of that? I swear he must have a fucking wheel as strong as iron. And over the shoulder takedown. Or over the shoulder fireman's carry takedown. Clothesline. Inverted atomic drop. Make a wish. Right between the legs. And a, well, it was in the midsection. It wasn't in the groin. You didn't hear him play sing opera after that. And now Texan gone for the anaconda vice. Is he going to make the scarecrow tap, snap or nap? And scarecrow had no choice but to tap out. Bloody hell, that means now that JC gets to pitch, pick the match type against the creature Eric Infernal for the Intercontinental Championship at ACW Combat Zone. I wonder what match he's going to pick. Well, I guess that's his future self to figure that one out. But bloody hell, that was a way to end the show. From now on, guys at the back, that's how you end the show. But let's get the official word. Here is your winner, Texan! And Skalan does not look happy that the Scarecrow lost that match. But now, JC gets to decide the match type that he's going to have against the creature Eric Infernal at Combat Zone. But that is our show for tonight. But do not go away just yet. We're going to go see if there's been any injuries or anyone back from injury. And given some of the matches, I'd be very surprised if there wasn't at least one injury. Okay, it looks like the Nightmare Azura Draven has suffered a minor injury. And it looks like that's the only news for this week. Okay, well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Have yourselves a good one, and be safe in the world, no matter where you happen to be. Right, after a show like that, I'm going to the drink. Ranger, you're paying.